Hi, my name is Dr. Paul Tucker, and I'm here to talk to you today about the calcium score or Heart Saver CT. It has a number of different names, but ultimately the most common name is the calcium score. This is a test that we do routinely in cardiology. It's looking for plaque in the heart arteries. Uh, it's typically reserved for people who are at risk for heart disease. So not the very young, but people in middle age and older. The reason this test is important is because coronary artery disease is the number one killer of Americans and probably most civilized populations around the world. The calcium score is a very easy way to assess your risk for this problem or this disease. It's very easy to do. It's a CAT scan. It takes about five minutes. You only have to hold your breath a few seconds. There's really no preparation for it. You can come in in your street clothes and they might have you take off some jewelry or maybe get you into a hospital gown, but it's really very quick. It's not an MRI, so you're not in a closed tunnel or anything like that. Uh, it's basically a donut-shaped CT scanner, and you slide into the donut and you slide out of the donut, and it all takes just about five minutes. What the scan is looking for specifically are calcified plaques in your heart arteries. It can't pick up soft plaque, which is important too, but typically the two of them go together. So if you have a fair amount of hard plaque, you can presume that there's going to be some soft plaque there as well. Basically, the test gives us a value or a score, and we go from there to decide what your risk might be based upon that score. Who is a good candidate for this test? Well, it's a lot of different people. If you're over 40 and you have lots of risk factors, let's say diabetes, you're a smoker, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or family history of early heart disease, then you might be a good candidate for that. In my practice, I pretty much routinely do it in patients over age 50 if they have at least one risk factor. That could be just hypertension, it could be smoking, it could be uh, BMI or uh, over 25 or being overweight, uh, BMI over 29 to 30, which would classify a person as having obesity. Um, uh, smokers very frequently have the highest calcium scores, but not always, uh, but smoking is definitely a contributor to the score. One of the nice things about the calcium score is the amount of radiation is very small. It's equal to the amount of radiation you might get just with ambient exposure to sunlight over the course of a year. So in other words, not a whole lot. And in addition, it's not a dye or contrast test. So there's no needles, no IVs, no contrast. You don't have to worry about any of those things. So let's talk a little bit about the scoring. The score can range from anywhere to zero uh, to as high as 11 or 12,000. Uh, but generally, a score of zero indicates very low risk of having a future cardiac event in the next five years, uh, probably on the order of less than 1% chance. Um, anything between zero and 100 indicates a mild amount of plaque in your arteries and a mild chance or a low chance of heart disease in the next five years, but not as low as if it was a zero. We consider a bad score over 400. If it's over 400, it means you're at increased risk of having a significant narrowing or even a cardiac event such as a heart attack or a presentation to the hospital for chest pain in the next five years. I will tell you in my clinical practice though that I see lots of patients with scores of over 400 and I would say the vast majority of them don't have events in the next five years because again part of the issue is they're seeing a cardiologist we're already starting to manage the risk factors that could lead to those events so we're getting ahead of the curve, so to speak. Let's talk about what do you do if the results are abnormal. Well, a good step is to talk with your doctor, a cardiologist, or primary care to find out about your risk factors. The most common risk factors for heart disease are smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and family history of heart disease. It's also a risk factor to be significantly overweight. What I generally do with my patients who have elevated calcium scores is we start managing those risk factors. If your cholesterol is high, we talk about ways to get it down. Diet and exercise first, depending on how high it is. If it's really elevated, for example, LDL over you know, 190, uh, then we're going to be talking about a statin very early. If the LDL is more in the moderate range, for example, let's just say around 100 to 150, probably working on diet and exercise first. But it also depends on the calcium score. If the calcium score is really high, and the lipids are only moderately high, I would be more likely to treat that person, for example, with a statin than someone who has a very low calcium score or zero, but has moderate high cholesterol. So everything is a balance and everything is a calculation, if you will. 
there's not a one size fits all approach uh, to what you do once you have an elevated calcium score. So one of the common questions I get from patients is, well, what do I do now? I've got plaque in my arteries, what do I do? Well, if they have a very high score over 400, I typically will do some sort of further testing on them, such as a stress test. It could be a treadmill test, a nucleus test, something like that. If their score is under that and they have absolutely no symptoms, no chest discomfort, no shortness of breath, no unusual fatigue or dizziness with exertion, then we just talk about risk factors. And again, this is where sort of the art of medicine comes into play. But we want to control things like blood pressure. If you're diabetic, get your A1C under control, preferably under 6.5. If you have significant high cholesterol, we want to try to get your LDL under 100 and ideally under 70. If you're a smoker, we want you to stop smoking. If you have bad dietary habits, we're going to work on that. And if you're not an exerciser, we're going to get you to start exercising, all to try and stabilize that plaque and slow its progression. Another question I frequently get is, how do I dissolve it? How do I make that plaque go away? Well, we don't have a magic bullet yet for that kind of thing. Uh, there are some medications uh, that are inject injectable medicines that have shown in some clinical trials uh, some plaque regression, but for the most part what we're trying to do is halt the disease where it is or slow its progression significantly, and that's where the risk factor management comes in. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I hope it's been helpful. Have a great day.